Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Sarah Hume. I'm the curator here at the Kent State University Museum, and I would like to welcome everyone to this very special presentation that we have in conjunction with our exhibition, Stitched Regional Dress Across Europe, which is actually now in its final weeks, and it's closing on January 30th. So I certainly urge everyone to um, take the opportunity to come and see it while you still can. Um, the exhibition, um, it looks at regional dress from the entire continent of Europe, and it concludes with a special section that focuses on the traditional blouse, um, which are it, which has been a central component of all European regional dress. But the most iconic designs for these traditional blouses are definitely those which come from Romania. And we're very lucky today to have an expert on the Romanian traditional blouse, Andrea Tanasescu, the founder of La Blouse Romaine movement and community, as well as the initiator of the Universal Day of the Romanian Blouse. Andrea is joining us today from Bucharest through the magic of Zoom, um, and we are very excited to have her insights on this subject. Thank you very much, Sarah. Um, I'm really honored to be here with you today, and thank you very much for the invitation. So uh, I can share my screen. Let's make, let's hope. Oh, are you, have I, are you allowed? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Works? Yes. So I will uh, tell you a story about the magic and resilience. This is the story of the Romanian blouse called also Ia, as we spell it in Romanian, and its global impact in the 20th century and 21st century because that has also an impact on our new millennium. So on the world map, here is Romania uh, in the you know, center of the world for me. But in Eastern Europe for uh, Europeans, uh, this is Romania, the birthplace of the Romanian blouse. But actually the ethnographical uh, region of the Romanian blouse is also Romania and Republic of Moldova. Uh, which was part of Romania before the Second World War. So uh, here is a beautiful image and a beautiful map of the Romanian blouse because uh, we have different models, different stories for each village, for each location in Romania and around our borders. Every blouse has a story stitched in very, very old symbols and motifs which are found in the old Europe culture is a Neolithic culture that uh, was thriving uh, in, the, in the sixth and seventh millennia uh, before Christ in uh, Central and Eastern Europe. And it was a culture centered around women. Women, they were the, the matriarch of uh, arts and, um, and rituals and now, um, after um, you know uh, a lot of uh, researches and a lot of uh, um, discoveries, we realize that you know those Neolithic figurines, for example, here from uh, Kukuten, the the circle of goddesses, is found also in the Romanian folklore because we keep those traces of the uh, matriarchal societies, uh, or maybe matristic as scholars. Um, um, are, are um, describing this culture because it was a culture around, centered around women. And we keep those rituals and those stories um, in our folklore, in dances, in um, uh, rites, rites of passage, and also in the blouses. And here is a beautiful uh, circle of women, women uh, in our times in celebrating the Midsummer and the Romanian Blouse Day. And um, I found this comparison uh, uh, very beautiful. These are like trees connected with myceliums. We are all connected with our roots. Uh, it's not only about a location, but it, it's uh, about our uh, you know, human civilization. Through folklore, through traditions, we are all connected with our roots. And we are um, uh, sending this message to the, every, every generation. Uh, as, you see uh, the new generation, the new traditions, 
are here to stay for uh, forever. The Romanian solar dance, Hora, it was the most important moment for the Romanian women to show their blouses, to show their creations. So this was in the, in the past, the most important uh, you know, stage for the Romanian blouse. And the Romanian blouse is different, even if it looks the same for a foreigner, but it is different for uh, each village and it's different for each woman. They, um, they were written their own story in, in the blouse and every model is different. But to come to our um, uh, subject, the um, um, global impact of the Romanian blouse, I'm starting with uh, the beginning of the 20th century when uh, Romania had um, a royal house as it's now in the uh, United Kingdom. They had a, a Queen Elizabeth of Romania was the first queen of Romania. And she was the one who was, who was the first to, which was promoting the Romanian blouse abroad. And she was encouraging uh, women in the, in the villages to uh, create beautiful models also for the elite society, not only for their own use. So she was the one who uh, actually founded the first um, the studios, the first atelier of Romanian blouse in the beginning of the 20th century. And um, as you can see, uh, there were different kinds of designs. One which was uh, native, Tsaranka design. Tsaranka means peasant in Romania and also uh, uh, designs adapted for the fashion of that period. But uh, uh, after the Queen uh, um, Elizabeth, uh, uh, she was succeeded by Prince Marie of Romania, then Queen Marie of Romania, which is for me the um, original influencer of the Romanian blouse, I can say, because um, uh, her influence was tremendous. Why? And I'm, I'm just, I will quote, mm -hmm. Um, uh, later um, a, a newspaper from New York from 1935. Uh, she was really involved in the, uh, all the efforts of the Romanians to recover after the First World War. And also she wanted to present an image for her new country because Romania was reunited as it is today um, after the uh, First World War in 1918. So um, I'd like to say that uh, she was an original influencer because she was not uh, selling any products that, as you see today, the influencers in the social media. She was empowering people. She was empowering people to give their contribution uh, to the recovery after the uh, First World War. And I would like to uh, imagine that also in our days, we need to have this kind of models to recover ourselves after this, you know, difficult period, from, uh, especially in, in the last two or three years. So um, Queen Maria of Romania was the queen of the people. She was very connected with uh, uh, rural Romanians, with the peasants, uh, and she was, was also adopting the uh, traditional blouse and the traditional costumes of Romania. She was actually the first queen that was, you know, cover on the uh, Times magazine. Um, but uh, uh, here is what she uh, she um, in encouraged, you know, the, the young Romanians and the young women to uh, do in uh, after the world, the Second World War the First World War, sorry. So the gracious patronage of many Romanian movements has endeared Queen Marie of Romanians, particularly to the women. Through her efforts, those of her daughters, the world has learned to appreciate the peasant arts and crafts of Romania. She has done much work causing a revival of the home manufacture of Romanian textiles and ceramics, which just before the war were re being replaced by German aniline dyes and Austrian pottery. She has encouraged also women to wear the native dress and all on, uh, on all occasions and has so persistently ignored the Parisian fashion for them and for herself that she has become thoroughly identified with the alluring Romanian background 
whether it is that via the modern interior of her Bucharest palace of some humble monastic retreat amid the groves of Carpathians. Um, um, a, a biographer of uh, a contemporary Romanian uh, royal woman, if he pursue comparisons of personal attributes, can har hardly fail to realize the plethora of themselves possessed by Queen Marie of Romania and the realities among her achievements. So um, she is actually the one who transformed a little bit uh, the traditional uh, blouse as it was worn uh, in the villages and made it accessible for the higher society and also for foreigners. Because it's difficult sometimes to translate all this um, uh, specific identity, all the uh, language, the, um, the woven language of the blouse. And uh, Queen Marie of Romania made it with success. This is a beautiful example of, uh, um, I'd say, cultural fashion uh, uh, ensemble, because this is actually not very traditional. It's a modern adapt adaptation of the Romanian traditional costume and also of the Romanian blouse. I can call it as it haute couture, because everything was handmade, every, everything was hand embroidered, um, the apron was hand woven. So uh, it's very, very close with what is called today modern um, haute couture. And um, the handmade in Romania was very famous between the, uh, the, in the, in the interwar period. And many of the Romanian ateliers, they were exporting Romanian blouse also in Europe and also in the United States. Of course, as is the tradition of the Romanian blouse, we pass the tradition from mother to daughter and also uh, Queen Maria of Romania passes the tradition to um, her daughter, uh, Princess Elena of Romania, which I, I really, she is the princess of my, my heart, my soul. Um, she's an inspiration for me, uh, and um, I can say that I founded my um, our movement, La Blues Romaine movement. She was a, a muse for us. So uh, Princess Elena of Romania um, was the youngest daughter of Queen Marie of Romania, and here is a beautiful pictures uh, well, picture uh, with her in uh, in United States because they had a tour in 1930 uh, in 1929. In October 1929, and um, as you can see, she was uh, in all occasions dressed in the Romanian blouse and wearing the Romanian traditional uh, coats and outfits. Um, her legacy uh, is now part of the um, Kent University Museum, and uh, I would like to thank you on. Um, especially for, for these beautiful displays uh, and for images that you shared on the social media, because they were an educational, uh, let's say, um, um, uh, content for our community in uh, our early days in 20, uh, 2012. So uh, thank you once again for showing and displaying and sharing the beautiful collection of Princess Ilana of Romania from Kent Museum. But then from the royal family, we moved to the modern art where Brâncuș, Constantin Brâncuș and Henri Matisse were, um, um, let's say, putting the Romanian blouse and the Romanian tradition uh, on the stage of the modern art. Constantin Brâncuș was um, a Romanian sculptor and he is uh, renowned as uh, the father of modern sculpture. But his uh, inspiration, his roots, were from the Romanian traditional culture, from the uh, folklore, from the, our fairy tales. Here is a beautiful example of Maestra, bird Maestra. Maestra is the magical bird in the Romanian folklore. And also the endless column, the endless column which connects the earth with the sky. Um, they are the motifs that you can find also on the Romanian blouse. But what is interesting here was the connection between artists, because in, uh, in the beginning of the century and also in the interwar period, uh, Paris 
Paris was the center of a cultural and artistical revolution. And uh, of course, Brinkwish was, um, you know, showing to his fellow painters uh, all our costumes. She was, uh, um, uh, um, uh, she was in love with the traditional culture of his villages from Oltenia. And this is how Matisse actually get in touch for the first time with a Romanian blouse. And later also uh, between his friendship with a Romanian uh, um, painter, Theodor Palladi. So between these you know, artistical connections, uh, Henri Matisse, the, the French painter has you know, um, had a, a, an amazing uh, background because she was um, um, part of a family which was a textile uh, um, lovers. They were textile collectors. They are a textile. Um, they have some businesses around textiles. So Matisse had an amazing collection of textiles, and this is how he discovered actually the Romanian blouse. Here are the first sketches of um, of his. Uh, um, um, paintings, but uh, you know, um, the quintessence of the um, Matisse and uh, the story of the Romanian blouse is in La Blouse Romaine, the painting that he started in 1939, um, right before the Second World War, when everyone was leaving Paris and France sometimes because of the war. Uh, Matisse. Uh, um, accepted the situation and he was actually involved in creating the future, in feeling the future of a beautiful uh, uh, Europe with peace and uh, joy and uh, brighter days. And he found this peace in the message of the Romanian blouse. And here is, um, I can say, um, our, our flag, our flagship, the Romanian blouse, the painting of Henri Matisse, um, which was finished in April 1940. After the Second World War, uh, we are, uh, you know, coming into a new era, a new era of creativity, and the hippie movement uh, was, uh, you know, again uh, a stage for the Romanian blouse. As you can see, the Romanian blouse is there when a revolution comes, when a revolution about beauty and freedom, the Romanian blouse stays there. And uh, here are um, some examples of the influence of the Romanian blouse in the pop culture. And as you can see, Indiana Jones had a Romanian blouse. Um, um, ABBA, uh, the very well-known uh, Sw uh, Swedish uh, musical group, and of course, this influence uh, uh, arrived in the fashion, in the high fashion, in haute couture, where Yves Saint Laurent uh, uh, transferred the uh, painting of Matisse in, uh, again in embroidery, again in uh, uh, the beauty of um, uh, clothing. And in 1999, uh, uh, the first image was from 1981, but in 1999, uh, uh, Yves Saint Laurent has dedicated to the Romanian blouse an entire collection called La Blouse Romaine. And she uh, made a statement that I, I think is iconical and it will persist for uh, the next um, probably centuries. A Romanian blouse does not belong to any period. All the pants and clothes are passed down from century to century without going out of fashion. So this is the beautiful finale of the 99 um, uh, summer um, um, collection La Blue Romaine by Yves Saint Laurent, uh, inspired by the Romanian traditional folklore. Also, the trend um, uh, has lasted in the beginning of 2000s, when other designers were getting inspired from the Romanian blouse, but this time without giving any credit to this beautiful legacy uh, that we, we all have, not as Romanian, but, but as, um, as a humankind. So this is the story that, um, you know, uh, involve us, the new generation, and um, thousands of years of collective design, as 
I wrote in 2012, it can be found only sometimes in a season. And this is not fair. And because it's not fair, uh, the, the movement uh, started in 2012 because every time when the Romanian browse has um, a kind of dangerous situation around it, a movement came in. So this is the movement that I found in 2012, the La Blouse Romaine. And it was very, um, you know, um, natural. It's, it was growing very or organical because what I've done is asking people to change their picture on Facebook with picture wearing the authentic Romanian blouses and also declaring 24th of June, which is the midsummer, the Romanian blouse day. So this was the moment, um, thanks to fa Facebook, when everyone could join in in a beautiful celebration of history, heritage, beauty, tradition, and connection with our uh, grandmothers, with our great grandmothers, with all the generation of women that have uh, sending us a message, a message of beauty and uh, a message of life. So these are the first pictures for our the first exhibitions of the Romanian blouse. Um, and it was a very emotional moment because suddenly all these humble, you know, uh, um, villages, they were uh, again on the stage of the art, on the stage of, of uh, events and culture, not only in Bucharest, but in 50 countries around the world. So this was um, uh, um, also a movement of connection, of reconnecting people through their identity, through their traditional clothes. And uh, here are a beautiful example of, um, of an exhibition that was held in Galateca Gallery in Bucharest in 2014, where blouses with their stories were displayed as, you know, uh, works of art. So this is how a new generation is growing. Uh, more conscious about the value and um, the need to preserve this beautiful heritage. And this is again one of my, my favorite photography uh, from the Romanian blouse day because uh, they were you know, a group of four boys. They weren't having, not having the Romanian shirts, the traditional shirts. When they have a blouse probably from their mothers or from their grandmothers and they keep this blouse very close to them and showing as an identity as a proud element of their culture and this is you know the first uh, edition of the Romanian blouse day in Washington DC uh, and this is the I mean uh, the fifth edition uh, also the the moment when we started the gift credit campaign but it's, this is one of our achievements, declaring the Universal Day of the Romanian Blouse through a proclamation uh, issued by um, the mayor of uh, Washington, D.C. And of course, with this kind of movement, uh, we open an, a Pandora box and uh, um, the knockoffs and you know, the copies of the Romanian Blouse without giving any credit were showing off. Um, and um, a case, especially one case um, that involves a Romanian coach from the uh, Metropolitan Museum was included in the Tory Birch collection in 2018 without giving any credit. And this is um, how we started a second movement called Give Credit. And this movement uh, asked, you know, the fashion houses, the fashion labels from around the world to give credit, to give uh, um, support to all these cultures from they are, uh, they are getting the inspiration. And second, again, uh, was uh, another famous case uh, between uh, uh, Bihor, a community from the Transylvania, from the northwestern part of Romania and the famous house of Bihor. And you can see the replica is identical. Uh, and again, uh, um, this movement actually was even, uh, this case was even uh, bigger and they, uh, it lead, uh, leads us to um, uh, a research project called Give Back Credit to the Heritage Communities, co-founded by the Creative uh, Europe uh, Program of the European Union. 
And through this um, uh, project, we are partnering with the University for the Creative Arts, uh, National Heritage, the National Institute of Heritage in Romania and Gordana Grubcevic from Serbia. And we are trying now to find solutions uh, to connect uh, more ethically and more um, um, uh, sustainable the fashion houses, the fashion and design industry with traditional cultures, with traditional communities, also with uh, um, institutions of culture as museum and, uh, and so on. And now we are prepare, pre preparing actually the first collection um, of the Romanian blouses made in collaboration with an Romanian-American Romanian designer, Monica Miller. And she uh, is working closely with a, a team of artisans and a team of experts from the Romanian Museum to create actually a, an ethical connection and to revive the production of the Romanian blouse. Um, and hopefully we're gonna have the first, um, uh, the first uh, items ready in uh, 2000, uh, uh, 2022 and 2023 uh, ready to be to be uh, shared with uh, um, uh, clients from all over the world. So these are some pictures from our creative residencies in Bihor. But in the same time, we have the Romanian blouse mirroring the Scottish tartan and we are having a research also in Scotland, connecting also young designers with their um, uh, traditional culture. And, uh, and at my um, um, last slide is an invitation for the World Cultural Fashion Day, because we uh, think as Romanians that we are all connecting through our, through our culture. So on 22nd of June, we, uh, we're gonna launch the first you know, celebration of traditional uh, um, clothing of traditional textiles, of traditional designs from all over the world. So please join in um, as museum, as persons, um, uh, join in and uh, um, just, you know, feel the beauty of these messages that are sent from generation to generation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andrea. This was so fascinating. Um, I, um, I invite everyone to pose questions in the chat, and I'm going to go over the ones that we have so far and ask Andrea um, her, for the answers on these. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, undo the shared. Can I, um, oh. can I unshare the screen, or do we want? Yes, 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 yes. Screen? yes. I don't know who, oh, because I can't see the, let me, I need to get the questions up. All right, sorry. Technical difficulties. Okay. Ah, perfect. Okay, now I can see the chat. Um, so, um, okay, well, first there is a comment. Um, from Elizabeth Mark Steiner that um, that Lori King has a, her latest book is Castle Shade, which features a note about Romanian blouse and Queen Marie. Um, so that's interesting. Um, and uh, there's a link there for people who want to um, to see that book. Um, and then there's actually a question that's for me. Um, so how do we go about scheduling research on Romanian traditional pieces available in your museum archives? Um, and you're welcome to um, go ahead and contact me if you want, if someone wants to visit and um, look at the pieces that we have. Um, I can, um, let me put my email address in for everyone so they can contact me. Um, so you can send me an email and let me know if you want to make a research appointment and we'll make that happen. Um, but also if you want to see the pieces and you're in the area, um, there are many Romanian blouses and other Romanian outfits that are on view in the stitched exhibition. Um, several blouses, um, a complete man's outfit, vests, um, other complete women's outfits, etc. cetera. Um, so here's a question and I'll ask Andrea um, and I can sort of touch on this too, but what should people do with their home collections of Romanian blouses and textiles? How do we display them? Ah, that's beautiful because um, in on 24th of June when is the Romanian Blouse Day, actually we created an initiative years ago called 
the mu home, my home museum, displaying them uh, in our, you know, um, own homes and um, making videos, documenting them and making pictures and also connecting, connecting with the um, uh, groups of uh, Romanian blouse um, experts, which are uh, a lot on Facebook. If you can find our groups and you can find our um, social media accounts, then we can connect you with experts and then you can discover also the stories and the meanings and also you can learn to stitch and to create your own blouse. Um, that's great. Um, actually, I'll, I'll let that stand as our answer to that. And I actually, this makes me think, um, if you want to join the community um, that Andrea has on Le Blues Roman, if you're interested, I'm putting the Facebook link to their page. Um, which is a very popular page I have, I have come to know. Um, so if people are interested in, in joining that community too, um, I invite that. Um, so here's another question. Um, and this is a good one. Um, do you have information on existing stores or villages where one can buy these products? Yes, of course. We have information and there are villages that are um, different kind of blouses in the South they are different in the north, they are different, but uh, also uh, we can send you links after this talk uh, and we can share with you information from where you can buy authentic Romanian blouses. Because there are a lot of knockoffs and a lot of, you know, blouses which are not authentic. And um, um, in this way, if you can buy a blouse from a village, you can support the artisan and you can support actually the tradition. Yeah, I think that's a really interesting distinction and one that you touched on a lot in the talk about, um, you know, the traditions being the way they're made and the places that they're made um, and that being a big component of it. Oh. Okay, so here um, um, we have um, someone who's interested in the legal problem of these copy cases and it, um, is doing research from a legal perspective to see if there's any legal solution. Um, and I'm thinking if maybe registering the patterns as um, GI, a geographical indication, can partially solve this issue. Um, and um, she knows, for instance, in India that they did this. Um, and I believe you have a like, legal background, if I'm not correct. Um, yes. Um, I wonder if yes. you know what sort of the legal grounds are. Uh, for the moment, there are a mix of legal solutions. There is not um, um, any kind of protection for traditional cultural expressions. Uh, there is not any treaty that you know uh, has um, um, you know directives or uh, legal um, um, influence on uh, the national legal systems. So there are a lot of negotiation in the WIPO, uh, World Intellectual Property Organization, around protecting traditional knowledge and traditional cultural expressions. But for the moment, we are researching actually our uh, give back credit to the heritage community. We have also this objective to find some legal solutions. And um, probably at the end of the year, when our project will uh, um, uh, present the conclusions and the proposals, uh, I will invite all of you <laughs> through, um, through um, Sarah to participate to our um, final conference and um, we'll disseminate our legal solutions at that time. But until, until that moment, I will um, strongly encourage you to promote the traditional uh, um, cultural uh, um, expressions as Romanian blouses, um, because this is uh, the, the only way right now, sharing the knowledge, educating ourselves to protect this uh, uh, beautiful uh, uh, legacy, um, uh, beautiful cultural legacy. Um, I have another question about the fabrics that are used in the blouses. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about what kind of material goes into them. In the past, in the past, we are using a lot of hemp because Romania had a strong tradition in, in uh, um, you know, growing hemp and um, extracting the hemp fiber. But of course, it was um, sometimes a difficult uh, fabric to wear. And in the moment that um, uh, cotton arrived, um, let's say the fashion was changed. 
um, also have a tradition of linen, but um, um, starting with the um, 19th, I think 18th century, also we had uh, um, included uh, silk, the warm silk um, fiber, which is also um, alive today because we have the last studio, the last workshop and the last farm which produce silk in Romania, somewhere in Oltenia. Um, but in our days, the basic, um, mm, let's say, uh, uh, fabric is cotton, cotton combined with hemp sometimes, and sometimes with silk. Um, actually, we had an earlier question, and I think I may have skipped it, and it's been repeated. Um, thank you for that, um, which is about um, pattern books and is it possible now to get books that have patterns so people can um you know recreate the um the embroidery patterns and the the patterns for the blouses yes yes there are a lot of books and as i told you there are a lot of communities there are very inspiring communities where women come together and they learn each other and they teach each other how to create uh, uh, romanian blouses and i will send you also links with these groups to uh, to navigate and to discover which is the best for you. Um, that's great. Do we have any more questions? I have some questions too. I have so many thoughts on this. Um, so I was kind of interested in um, in your talk. You talk a lot about women's blouse, and I wonder whether you sort of concentrate on women's blouses. Um, and how men fit into the equation in terms of their shirts and their traditional outfits. Yes, because um, I'm talking about the uh, women's blouses because they were responsible. The women were was responsible to create and to produce all the textiles in, in, the, in the house, in the home, their family. So that's why uh, their blouses and probably their um, their um, you know importance is higher than the uh, shirts of the men, because it is uh, have somehow a recognition that a woman the woman was the queen of the family, and this is very beautiful because we have actually a patriarchal society, but in the family the woman was recognized as a queen, and you can see it on the Romanian blouse. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, traditional dress really gives this sort of forum for women in which they have an um, important role. Um, so I, I mean, I do think that's that's interesting. Um, and also, oh, and one of the things that I had noticed and some of the examples that we have, um, the blouse is full length. It goes sort of, is quite long, like a dress. And then in some, a lot of the examples that you show, um, they're short. And I wonder if there's sort of a history or whether this is um, a local difference or whether this changes over time or if that's, there's some importance to that. It was a change over time because in the beginning was as a long dress. And then, uh, you know, um, because sometimes of the lack of the material and then changing as a fashion, they were split it in two. Uh, the first part is the shirt, Ia, and the second one, which is like a skirt, is called poile. So um, um, in the moment that, you know, especially in the 20th century, when the blouse was actually um, um, included in, you know, uh, everyday outfit, uh, we don't, you don't need the, the skirt, the other part of the blouse. So that's why uh, now today we have the blouse, but in the, in the you know, past we had actually a dress. Um, so we have some question about how the information um, is being shared um, on your website, Facebook page, or specific to this presentation. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what information, um, there's information that's in the chat. Um, I can post links in the chat here. Um, and, um, we regularly post to the Facebook page and your Facebook page, the, um, Romanian blouse Facebook page. Um, but I also will say that we are recording this, um, presentation and the presentation will be available on our YouTube channel. Um, so, um, and then there's, um, and I, and we spoke of this, this next question, um, a little bit we touched on, um, 
you know, we talk a lot about differences between different villages in the styles, um, but how much is there change over time in the um, in the dress styles? Is it sort of time? It's, it's about a, a change in terms of, um, let's say, uh, dimension sometimes of allure, but the change in the traditional, uh, you know, uh, patterns and in the structure of the Romanian blouse is is very little. And this is, for me, uh, probably one of the most important, um, you know, uh, attribute of the Romanian blouse. It is unchanged, actually, from, you know, centuries. Uh, this is a very remarkable cultural survival mm -hmm. and will be very interesting in the future to find out how actually they succeeded to resist in, in such, a, such a long period of time. Do you have a sense actually of how far back in time the Romanian blouse goes? Um, actually, the first blouses, they're supposed to be, you know, um, you know, dated, I mean, historically dated in um, actually 2000 years ago on the um, Roman Empire um, column, for example, in the column of Trajan from uh, Rome, and also in the um, Adam Clisi in Constanza in, in Dobroja in Romania, there is a, a, a bas relief with the Romanian blouses. And from my point of view, because what I've researched, I've seen um, very interesting, you know, um, um, ideas that are coming to present Romanian blouse and traditional Eastern European blouse actually coming from the uh, Neolithic times. All right. Trying to manage all these. Um, so the Queen, we have a question about Queen Marie's headdress. Um, and Suzanne Frank writes that this confuses the Romanian blouse presentation as uniquely Romanian. And I wonder whether um, her headdress is a, um, distinct to the area as well. The headdress, um, actually, it, it, it is not very uh, Romanian. It's um, a style, a proper style of the Queen Marie of Romania. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she was combining. She was combining different kind of styles. That's why uh, she was such an influencer in her period. Uh, because she um, actually uh, gave to the Romanian blouse this new and modern and contemporary look through her style. Yeah. Um, so we have we have a very specific question um, about the costume, and it's about Fagaras traditional dress. Right. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, and should the apron hang lower than the cortinza? Um, or in line with the hem of the underdress? It depends of the village because I'm coming from the Fagarai region. My grandmother was born there. And actually, I'm wearing a blouse from Fagarash. <laughs> um, and um, in some villages, it's longer. In some villages, it's shorter. So um, th this is actually the beauty of identity in every village because they come together and then decide what is their, you know, unique style. Um, all right, I have a, um, a participant here who is interested in getting in touch with you about the legal questions that you talk about. Um, and I wonder how the best way is for her to get in touch with you. I put the, the Facebook link there. Yes, and also my email. You can share my email okay. with everyone. So I'm open to discuss and to debate about the legal um, point of view. I'll put that in there for everybody. Take a second. All right. All right. There it is. Okay. So everyone has your info there. Um, okay. Um, that is all of the questions I think that we have. I'm so honored to have you join. Oh, we, we have more. Okay. Um, and I, um, about um, museums that have. Romanian blouse collections. I mean, I see you included a few in your presentation. The Met, um, the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Yes. 
Uh, and we do here at Kent State. Yes. Kent State University Museum. Um, and Mary Hill Museum has a beautiful collection of the Romanian blouses actually donated by Queen Marie of Romania, some of them, uh, and also a beautiful collection of furniture um, uh, mm -hmm. created by Queen Marie of Romania. Um, and um, I think there are some museums from California, I don't remember exactly the name, but um, you can find on our uh, Facebook page an album of pictures called the Romanian Blouse Museum of the World. And there you can discover, yes, collection also from the United States. But um, uh, I think, yes, Minjay Museum, Minjay Museum. Um, but um, a few of them were displayed in, in the last, you know, years. And hopefully we'll see in the next year probably um, more exhibitions with the Romanian blouse. This is all, hopefully, um, this is also uh, one of our dreams to uh, collaborate on an exhibition of the Romanian blouse in the United States of a major exhibition. Um, oh, I have a great question. So we have someone who does um, historical reenactments and historical embroidery um, and wants to make sure that she does give full credit because you were you know, talking about that and she wants to know um, how that she should do that properly. Uh, for the Romanian blouse, uh, giving uh, the full credit is to mention also the community from the blouse, uh, where, where the blouse belongs. So make sure that you mention the Romanian blouse in research and you give credit to those communities. And, um, you know, probably if you can have, uh, you know, um, you know, some historical or um, local uh, information will be highly appreciated about also artisans and, uh, and the history of that place. And we have just a wonderful post here that someone whose family tradition here in the US um, is to wear their um, Romanian dress at breakfast on the day of, of the wedding. So when there's a wedding, they wear that as part of that in the morning. So that's really beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Yes, yes, beautiful. We have the same tradition in Romania. Um, now, because there are a lot of uh, Romanian weddings which are having, you know, traditional costumes again and traditional Romanian blouses, and they have the religious ceremony in the uh, traditional costumes. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Um, if there's any more questions, I will give another second. This is really great. Um, we're so excited to have such, such interest in this subject. Um, and again, um, we've posted in the chat also the Instagram account for La Blues Roman. Um, and I just want to thank you again for joining us today, for everyone who's in the audience, but especially for Andrea um, and all your thoughts and insights on this. It's really wonderful. Um, and yes, um, if we could unmute, if everyone um, feels free to unmute and we will give a round of applause so that she can really um, see how much we appreciate her. Oh, thank oh, you very much. Oh, look at Veronica. Okay. <laughs> hey. Thank, thank you, Andrea. Beautiful. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. It I'm was so wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> bye bye, everyone. Thank you for joining bye -bye. us. Bye bye. Having a Recorded. beautiful year. Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.